So Kermit Gosnell was just found guilty on 266 of 268 criminal counts against him. So what are the specifics of what happened? I'll warn you in advance, this is pretty gruesome. He killed four babies, and there's also a count of third-degree murder of somebody by the name of Karnamaya Mongar. That's a former patient who allegedly died on an overdose of painkillers and anesthesia administered by his staff. Now, here's something that's interesting. His staff was completely untrained. None of them had any licenses to do what they were doing. The clinic was completely unsanitary. There were aborted fetuses kept in jars in a refrigerator. The articles even went as far as to say next to the lunch of the people who worked there. Oh, they're so, they're so sick, man. And, of course, on top of this, this is the one fact that you hear nobody mention uh, in the mainstream media. He didn't have an abortion license. So here's a guy who claims, yes, I'm an abortion doctor. He's not an abortion doctor. He's not licensed. What he did, and what he did four times, he would have the baby, he would deliver the baby and then kill the baby. Okay, that's not abortion. That's this little thing called murder. Not to mention that uh, third trimester abortion isn't legal either. See, this is the, the part about it that's uh, incredibly annoying, and actually I'll get to that in more detail in a second. Uh, every single action that Kermit Gosnell did is illegal under current law. But as a, a result of what happened with Gosnell, the Republicans are now proposing bills to crack down on all abortions. Now, again, you have to understand, Kermit Gosnell is a murderer. Nobody's going to defend a murderer because we all know very plainly murder is wrong. When you actually look at the abortion statistics, for example, 88% of all abortions occur within the first 12 weeks. So we're talking about gametes and zygotes and embryos and incredibly underdeveloped fetuses, no nervous systems whatsoever. We're talking about pregestation, right? So it's simply not the same. I mean, that's as stupid as saying, hey, uh, if you take a plan B pill the morning after, then that's the same as uh, delivering a baby and then killing the baby. No, obviously those are different things. And that was, uh, that became clear, number one, in Roe versus Wade when the court decided that way. And then since Roe versus Wade, there's been multiple abortion cases. A lot of people don't know this. Roe versus Wade was actually semi struck down. We now go by a standard, uh, what's called fetal viability. So you're allowed to have uh, laws within your own uh, states after a certain period, I think it's anywhere from 20 weeks to 24 weeks, where you can crack down on abortion as much as you want. It's just before that level that you can't do it because before then you're invading on the right to privacy because it's not two distinct human beings. It's the mother's choice, essentially, before that point. Now look, the reason why I've been talking about this a lot lately is because the right has been getting away with this incredible straw man argument where they just run around all day saying that, oh, Democrats support Kermit Gosnell. I defy you to name one. Name one, you're not going to find one. You're not going to find one. We don't support Kermit Gosnell. Because just because you believe in being pro-choice doesn't mean you're an abortion anarchist. Anytime, anywhere, for any reason whatsoever. No, nobody believes that. You made that up. We don't believe that. You want to ask what we believe? Have a conversation with us. We'll tell you. I'm always the first one to say, I draw the line anywhere from 20 weeks to 24 weeks, and then after that, you need to have a, a damn good reason, like health of the mother, for example, where the mother would die, or an incredibly uh, disastrous fetal abnormality where it would, the, the life of the fetus would be in jeopardy anyway, right? And by the way, you know where, where the law coincides with what I just described? The United States of America, we have that exact law. So, look, don't buy into the right-wing nonsense that, uh, Democrats support Kermit Gosnell, and we need to use this trial to crack down on all abortions. Because if anything, and this is the part where I lose some people, but I'm telling you, it goes without saying, because the statistics show this to be the case. When you do the opposite of cracking down on abortion, so in other words, if you do make sure you do um, sex ed. You make sure you do uh, discussions about contraception with teens, right? 
They learn about condoms. They learn about Plan B. They learn about all their choices. They learn about if they need to, to take care of some women's health issues, you go right away. Where you have safe, legal, rare abortions, you have less abortions than where you try to crack down on it and ban it. You don't believe me? Go look at any of the Latin American countries where they flat out outlawed abortion and look at the numbers. They have more abortions there than we do here. Now look, there's multiple factors that go into that. So for example, they also uh, poo-poo contraception. Usually those things go hand in hand, right? But either way, what we know for sure uh, isn't true is that when you crack down on it, the numbers will go down when it comes to abortion. Usually when you crack down on it, the numbers go up. Not to mention you put the, the life of the mother in danger when you do dangerous back alley abortions with coat hangers and stuff like that. Bottom line, and I know I'm dragging on now, point blank period, do not compare a murderer, Kermit Gosnell, to somebody who believes in safe, legal, rare, early abortion. We don't agree with him. We never did agree with him. What he did has always been illegal and always will be illegal, and it should be. Anybody that tries to tell you the opposite is lying to you.